Hey my friends, this is an episode on how to interpret instructions in yoga classes. Today we'll take a look at rolling or turning the upper arm out in downward facing dog pose. So what do we see? What's the reality for many people? And what is actually meant? You see, when we take the upper arms up and we stand here, this looks like perfectly set shoulders, perfectly placed shoulders. The reality often is we're here. Now the shoulders look different. Downward facing dog, maybe looking down, shoulders are still up, shoulders are still forward. Now, when we turn the upper arms out, we'll get to this position. That's what's meant. Let's take a look at where the difference is between what's meant and what the reality often is. The shoulder blade, this part of your skeleton, is the point where the arm bone attaches to the body. So whatever we do with the arm will involve the shoulder blade. When our shoulders come up, that means the shoulder blade actually follows the outline of the rib cage and it moves it up and along and over. So we actually have the shoulder blade sitting more on top of the rib cage and slightly slouched forward here in that maybe uh, correct worthy part of your downward facing dog, you see? Now, <laughs> if we look at then just turning the upper arm out, the shoulder blade isn't moving yet because an isolated movement of your arm other than twisting literally your arm away and out of the socket adds to instability, doesn't make you more comfortable, so it's not quite getting where you want to be. What we're really looking for is that movement of the shoulder blade so we can maintain a good fit of the arm bone to the socket and with that your shoulder blade stays in the right position, your shoulder socket so your joint stays congruent and stable and you feel good while also creating the stability for your pose. So here's the difference for you. In this position, yeah, shoulder it's slightly too high and too far forward, if we only rotate the arm, we're kind of here, see that bows like mm, not very great and the arm certainly doesn't have much strength or stability. When we take instead that shoulder blade onto the back of the rib cage, just like we would in a backward shoulder rotation from up, forward, up, see that's where we are, then we rotate back and down, shoulder blade sets onto the back and takes the arm with it. Look what happens here with the arm bone. Come from here, I'll take the shoulder blade back. Can you see how relatively here it looks like we're moving the arm, rotating the arm, taking the biceps out. But it's simply maintaining congruence at the joint and following with the shoulder blades to create greater stability in the body at the shoulder blade, maintaining a healthy shoulder joint. Go try this out. Always look at, when you hear instructions, what are they saying? What do they really want to achieve with that? Where are we going for rather than following, oh, I need to rotate the arm and with that you're making your shoulder blade and your shoulder joint vulnerable. Go practice. I'll see you next time.